Hi friends, I am Dharmala Shri from Smart Leaders IAS. In the preparation time, keep your notes very simple and take one authentic source of, for the materials whether it is current affairs or it is a conventional and revise it regularly. We will go to the article now. Today we are going to see the article which came on 20th Feb. The topics we are going to see today, we, two topics, one is Nepal-India win-win situation. After Oli came to power in Nepal, what are the ramifications for India and how India is seeking a course correction with respect to Oli government and Nepal and in the midst of China-Nepal closer ties. And the next one is fixing delivery. This one is about DBT in fertilizer. Already with respect to DBT, DBT is nothing but direct benefit transfer. Instead of giving subsidy to your to any material like LPG or any other thing, money will be transferred to your bank account. Here already DBT is asked in 2014 mains question. So we can expect one more question because DBT is quite successful in fertilizer. So we can expect a question here. First article, Nepal India win-win. So this Nepal India win-win, the expected area can be India, China, Nepal relation can be a triangular question or India is a failure in Nepal relation or because of India's action and uh, Nepal is going more towards China and now Nepal is drawing closer towards Pakistan as well. So with respect to prelims, you just focus upon the military exercises or with respect to hydroelectric projects and the recent one proposed railway line between Nepal and China in the Tibet area. Crux of the article is always India shows the big brother attitude according to the author of this article. Right from the Nehruvian period, 1950s, India is showing the big brother attitude to Nepal. So it is not giving the space to Nepal to stand on its own. Whatever the stability issues, that is political instability, or whatever be the security ramification, India has its own role in Nepal. That is what the main concern, or it is a criticism of the author in this article. However, we need not to go deep into that. For our exam point of view, India is not liked by Nepal. Or the attitude of India is seen as a big brother attitude by Nepal. Right choice of words, I think. The next part is political stability in Nepal. How political stability in Nepal, that is only government or the reason government or the constitution signed in the Nepal in 2015 will benefit India. Because he says that like poor states of India like Bihar or the surrounding states, Uttar Pradesh or so, the source of remittances for them, it is from Nepal. So the, when there is a stability, economical benefits to India is very high according to the author. And the next one is Northern train connectivity. The reason train connectivity between China and Nepal, it reduces the Nepal's dependency on India in very less time. And this can be beneficial for India as well because Northern states of India has another access to the Central Asia path via Tibet. This is the author's view. How? The reason moves made in Nepal is not against India, it is actually far for India. What will be the new implication? Here, Nepal's dependency on India is getting reduced because after this economic blockade, they have made few significant movements which draws them very closer to China. First one is this train connectivity from Kathmandu to China and Lhasa to Gaza. These are the main area, they have made the rail connectivity. But however, experts are saying that their uh, cost of rail connectivity, it has its own limitation. It is three times costlier than via India towards Haldia port. However, Nepal is much happier towards China now. We, it is actually a main concern for us. And the second one is network communication. That is network communication with China. They have made an agreement. This is again and uh, viewed as anti-Indian sentiment or uh, move towards Chinese also. And the next one is new alliances, Nepal and Pakistan. It is a most worrying signal for India because we have a close relationship with the Nepal and we are following the open border and 18, already 80 types of drug crimes are happening in the border and it will give you strategical implication for India with respect to the military and the border. Using China by Nepal whether it is a car or China as a bridge or India can use Nepal as a bridge to connect China. So these are some broad area. So be optimistic in your answers. We can say that can be an opportunity even in the midst. Next one is, with China, we can engage the hydroelectric projects in the Nepal and we can help Nepal currently experiencing power shortages almost 14 hours per day. So we can help Nepal by exploring hydroelectric projects along with China. So India, Nepal, China always need not to be in a 180 degree way, but it can be more beneficial 
if three are joined together and working effectively the way forward respecting the differences of nepal and china as well so we need to respect the difference and we need to engage continually because even with china we we are not at resolved the border issues and we are continuing and we are en engaging china with respect to economy so here we need to follow the same strategy with nepal and here it will be more natural because we are enjoying very close relationship with respect to cultural and the social relation and the next one is we need to focus more on the economic engagement rather than the political engagement so here we need to address this concern and the next one is to reach china use nepal as a bridge will be the best strategy and i have told in the previous slide this one and reviving the cultural and the social relationship with respect to the nepal is the need of our border management is very crucial for both the countries the second topic we are going to see is fixing delivery i have told the detail that is direct benefit transfer in fertilizer industry how far it is beneficial because we have started the pilot projects and now we are going to implement all over the country now the best thing that direct benefit transfer can be a useful or not in 2014 the role of direct beneficiary transfer not with respect to any uh, food grains or with respect to fuel it it is not as they have asked very general role of direct beneficiary transfer will reduce the leakages and subsidy or not the same way they asked in the mains and uh, this year we can expect whether it is a successful with respect to fertilizer or with respect to any other thing so i find the relevance of direct beneficiary transfer question for our mains the main crux of the article is direct beneficiary transfer in fertilizer industry it is actually a successful one yet it is having some challenges by addressing these challenges we can improve here standing committee report and parliament it says that whether we can follow the dbt in fertilizer or not but it says okay for the dbt and the next one is overcharge by the retailers for the ureas and the other fertilizers is getting reduced so it is a time we started reaping and addressing the main concern that is diversification of urea into other fields and unlike other direct beneficiary transfer here for fertilizer it is not given directly to the farmers it is actually credited to the manufacturing industries once the farmer is getting received the required fertilizer and here again is an other based direct beneficiary transfer or uh, and by using point of sales machine it is making more effective and efficient one is there any challenge yes it, of course there are so many challenges also and the main one is it connectivity it connectivity whether it is untrain uh, not training properly tower connections etc so they are not getting adequate infrastructure of it connectivity so it is main concern one challenge and the other challenge mentioned here is fertilizer industries working capital is getting increased the challenge needs to be addressed here icra says that working capital of fertilizer increased because only after the farmer receives their due share it is getting recorded then after that the amount is going back to the fertilizer industries so this delay the cycle delay which is making fertilizer industry the working capital more costly and however government is trying to find some solution here special banking arrangements as a temporary measure as, as of now they are implementing and the next one is increasing the price of urea is another opinion given by the experts in order to regulate the direct beneficiary transfer and the subsidy because increasing the price of fertilizer will provide less opportunity to divert and as well as it will give the fertilizer industry to the right needs at the right time because in only india i think it is a fourth uh, country in the world giving very low price for urea and other fertilizers excessive use of fertilizers already depleted or soil condition another important concern here is during the peak season an adequate fertilizer is not available to the farmers so we need to make some special arrangements during the peak season that is the flexibility for giving the fertilizer on time and and at many channels next one is there is no grievance redress me mechanism as of now so it needs to be put in place so these are the operational improvements needs to be done to make the direct beneficiary transfer in fertilizer to be more effective and here everyone accepts that dbt in fertilizer it is a successful one and it is addressing the concerns and improve the accountability and the transparency in the subsidy mechanism whenever a technology is introduced the chances of corruption and the leakages is getting reduced that is why the food corporation india also recommends their computerization end to end and all to reduce the leakages in the public distribution system so please take note of this also it is a very general point for you utilize your resources well all the very best thank you